One is known for his creativity in film and theater, and the other is known for his completely in-tune singing. Now, if you were thinking of EGOT winner Mike Nichols and R&B singer Chris Brown, well, no, not them. Michael Nichols is a theater director and actor and entertainment critic from upstate New York. And Chris Brown is a podcast host from Alberta, Canada, who can't wait for the Scream franchise, whose recent movie was based in New York, to follow the same route as the Friday the 13th franchise and have a film set in space. Together, Mike Nichols and Chris Brown talk about the entertainment industry as only two people who aren't the people you are thinking of only can this is no not them michael how are you i was ready to fight you for half of a second when i thought you were about to say waiting for the scream franchise to die and i was ready to pull out my switchblade and come for your throat but then you said in space and i said no that actually sold sold give it to me next week please (laughs) well come on less the less thought they put into it the better well, and that's what ultimately killed the Friday the 13th franchise. So maybe it will finally end with Scream 10, Scream X in space. I no like one can you hear Scream in space. I like the Scream movies, contrary to <laughs> what others may feel. I really enjoy them. The only bad one is four. And it's not even like bad. It's just mediocre. Wow. Sorry about it. Sorry about it. Wow. Um, but how are you? How's life been? How's uh, it's been a month? And I know we are recording this on June 1st. So happy Pride, happy Pride Month! month! <laughs> Anyone I, I, who I, has any form. obligations or any a- anger towards Michael, you are homophobic for the month of June. Please hold it till July 1st or July 5th after uh, uh, Independence Day. But overall, you're doing well? I Yeah, busy. Um, I just came off doing a new, sh- a brand new show. We workshopped it. It went really well. We got really good reviews. Um, and then I'm jumping into another, it's like a cabaret. And then I had, was invited to be a part of a staged reading of a play for a Jewish heritage festival. Um, and so that's really exciting. It's a small part and I don't have to learn lines and And one of my friends is doing it. So I'm really excited to be a part of that and getting invited to do that was really cool. Uh, So just a lot of work, plans to go to the city, plans to go to Cape Cod in July. I have a lot of like really cool, really exciting things kind of like in the docket for the summer that I'm like so excited to be here. So excited. You have been hitting New York a lot lately. If anyone's been paying attention to our social media feeds, we've been coming out with Michael's reviews for Lights of Broadway with Michael Nichols Pate, where he's been reviewing all the shows that he's been going to. Great reception so far. But it, it sort of leads into our first conversation that we want to talk about today. And it is, as of recording, 10 days away from the 70th uh, uh, Tony Awards. I don't know the exact number. So, uh, so the awards are coming out. Michael, are you excited? Uh, I the, am. The writer's strike is kind of throwing a loop for this year's uh, Tony Awards. But uh, before we get into the writer's strike, let's talk about the Tony Awards to begin with. Any surprises, any big uh, shocks or misses that you think of? There was a couple of of shocking nominations. Um, the amount of love that Ain't No Mo got I'm happy for, but normally shows that close don't get as much love. I think that not getting anything for Kite Runner at all was a little bit problematic in my opinion, because I thought it was an incredible show. Um, Overall though, it was was pretty standard for how I thought it was going to go. And a lot of the picks this season are pretty much locked in. I feel, especially with looking at the different Critics' Choice Awards, how that's been going. Um, all about the algorithm for you. But it's not algorithm. I mean, I agree with 95% of the It's algorithm, god it's, damn it. <laughs> it's not algorithm. It, I mean, a lot of it are really good picks, too. It's it's a good season. The issue is there's 28 plays and like 10 musicals that were eligible. And when you have that many plays, it overpopulates the pool. And so there were so many things vying for slots. I, I, I'm going to kind of throw a wrench into that. Are you just saying that because last year there was literally none nominated for anything? And this year there is, we're traditionally back to the larger award seasons because I, 
even the best actor for I think it was a play last year, there was only one person who was nominated and they literally had to have a vote to see if that person was going to get it because they just didn't want to give it to them. So two people, sorry. Two no, no, people. no, no, two years ago. Okay, so is that it was... just we're, we're finally getting back after the COVID-19 because this is the year that we're sort of seeing movies become more popular, more like the movies that were filmed during the pandemic and after the pandemic are being released and more people are going to the theater and things are actually good again? I mean, yes and no. There was a lot last year. The issue is plays are much easier to produce. They are less cast usually, less people involved. So there's a lot more newer works that have come out that we've been able to mount, especially in the time of COVID when everyone's writing new work, they were writing, oh, we can only have, we're probably only gonna be able to have five people on stage when we go to do this. So we have to have only five people. And so it's a lot of smaller things, which usually means a limited run. And a lot of shows are now opting for a limited run versus trying to do open-ended because limited run, you know, when you start, you know, when you close and you capture more people that way, because you know, it's only 16 weeks. I have to go into 16 weeks or I'm not going to get to see it versus, oh, it's open-ended. It'll run for a while. I'll see it when I get around to it. And then, oh, it's closing. I didn't get around to it. So Plus you there's... capture people better. Plus, there's a there's the ability to stunt cast, right? We always talk about the bringing in the Jinx monsoons, the Pamela Andersons to Chicago, where you can go out and get a big name and say, okay, we're 16 weeks. That's all we are. Can you can you guarantee us 16 weeks? This isn't going to be like a a two year guaranteed. It's 16 weeks of your time, and then we'll close no matter what. And if we revive it year from year two years down the line, we can bring someone else in. Well, yes and no. Um... With regards to kind of stunt casting, it means that more celebrities can sign on for the entire run. But like with Chicago, you a lot of times are only doing a 13 week window and then they're replacing you with someone else. A lot of shows, I mean, there've been what, 40 Phantoms? There's been tons of the, there's been so much turnover at Chicago. It's just, it's you. a lot of times producers are looking, okay, what do I need to do to make this successful. And a lot of times it's, if it's open-ended, you're just not gonna capture the audience versus there's a limited time, people are more apt to run and see that versus I'm gonna go see Cats for the 50th time, or I'm gonna go see Lion King or, or Wicked. It's, I gotta go see The Cottage, which is coming out this summer with Eric McCormick because it's only for 16 weeks. And if I wanna see it, I've gotta go. Is that is that actually a thing? Yeah, it's uh, The Cottage, it's Laura Bell Bundy, Eric McCormick, uh, and Jason Alexander is directing it. So uh, can I stay at your place for like a week so I can go see sure. Eric McCormack and throw my panties at him? Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Sean Hayes is on Broadway right now in Goodnight yeah. Oscar, so you could see Will and Grace. Nah, I don't want to see Grace. I'm okay without seeing Grace. Without seeing Sean Hayes? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 my, I need to, I need to go support my Canadian boys, um, but. This year's Tonys is going to be a little bit different compared to previous yeah. years. There's no host. The WGA, the Writers Guild of America, is on strike. They are still on strike compared to, I think they started in early May, if not late April, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. And this is this is going to change the way that the Tonys is uh, produced and sort of broadcast, isn't it? Well, yes and no. Um, there is still a host. Ariana DeBose is hosting. They actually had already thrown a, they had a script already completed that the WGA said they would not pick it if the Tonys would throw it out. So the script's already thrown. It's gone. Um, we got rid of her. And they've done an unscripted version before. I want to say it was the late 80s, early 90s. Um, they had a host. The host kind of just riffed and ranted and they showed a lot more of what's on Broadway. So there's a lot more shows that got to have like, here's scenes from our play. Here's scenes from our music. Because a lot of times it's the musicals get a big brassy number that they're doing. Because the, the purpose of the Tonys isn't necessarily to win awards. It's to sell tickets. You want to be able to walk away saying, oh, that performance made me want to go see that show. And I didn't have any interest until I saw that big flashy number. Like it's done to really try and capture an audience that might be coming in the summer. That's like, I need to go see a show. Oh, I want to see that one. Um, that's what happened with Saturday Night Live. It had an uptick in sales after the Tonys because of how good that performance was. Um, so a lot of shows like Kimberly Akimbo needs the bump. Uh, Shucked is going to need the bump. A lot of the plays usually get screwed. So this time I, I'm hoping we get to see some play like scenes. 
I'd love to see some Jessica Chastain on there. It's so easy to bring it. There's literally chairs. I'm going to talk about that forever. It's literally seared into my soul. And I'm going to roll my eyes every time you say that name because I'm still very angry that she won the Best Actress for the Oscars for Tammy She's going Faye. to be an EGOT winner. Uh, uh, anything else you want to talk about about the Tonys? Because I know it is fast approaching. This is going to be a unique weird. We're not going to get Angela Bassett did a thing this year. I mean, year, we but... might. We might just get her recycling that, except changing it to the different Tony um, lady. Jessica Chastain did a thing. Sean Hayes did a thing. Someone else did a thing. Someone made fun of it on the TikToks. It was like, Jessica Chastain did the thing. Uh, Lori Metcalf, my woman king. Like, it was so weird. It was like, oh, you just dragging this Ariana DeBose soul. Um I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be really I, good. I, I just want to know if it's going to be better than the 1989 opening of the Academy Awards with Tom, uh, with Rob Lowe and Snow White. Because if that is the epitome of bad openings, I'm looking forward to it. So I'm really hoping. Go ahead. It's going to be mediocre. I don't think it's going to be anything spectacular. Um, I'm just looking forward to next season already. There's a lot of great stuff now finally getting announced. I'm already looking forward to it. Um, uh, there's one that's based on the making of Jaws called The Shark is Broken that came over from England that's starring um, Robert Shaw's son. Oh, really? Yeah, he wrote it and is starring in it. And it's about how like all the drama that went on with Jaws and the shark being broken and like all the that's fighting why... and that's why it's called the shark is broken i'm so fucking excited about it i am too i'm really looking forward to that now my, hopefully i can come twice to your house and we can go to see the shark is broken and eric mccormack so i can yell get off the stage i love you <laughs> not until the end you do not do that in the middle i will i, I will elbow you so hard you would elbow a cancer patient. Wow. Sure would in a theater if you're shouting and rating Raven. Uh-uh, we don't behave like that in a theater. Um, I want to turn to some of the big news stories that have happened over the last uh, six, uh, well, not six weeks, four weeks. And I want to start with this because it is Pride Month and one of the big uh, movies that's going to be coming out here soon. If not, it's already out by the time this airs. I don't completely know what day it actually drops. But uh, The Little Mermaid with Halle Berry, uh, Halle Bailey, sorry, and Melissa McCarthy. Um, there has been some uproar over uh, not having a drag queen give uh, Melissa McCarthy her makeup tutorial. And they are being they are being slammed, the makeup artist, for their shoddy work of her makeup. Now, I've looked at the, the photos and of uh, Melissa McCarthy as Ursula. and. You poor unfortunate souls who have to uh, criticize everything that's out there right now. I'm sorry. I think it looks good. And I know for those who are listening to this, Michael is rolling his eyes and basically about to jump through the fucking camera to attack me. But I think it looks good. Yikes. Big yikes. Why? I just think it looks terrible. It, like they're going for that divine drag look. And like, it just looks so bad. I think nobody's having an issue with her cast. And if he had done a good job, I don't think anyone would have cared, but it just doesn't look like good drag makeup. It just looks like something I could do. But And I'm not a drag queen. I don't, I, I, I look at it and I don't see who you just said, Divine or Miss Divine or whatever their name Divine? is. Divine? Yeah. I, that's, I, who, I, no, I, that's who, that is who the original, uh, the cartoon Ursula was based on the John Waters divine that caricature. Okay, understandable. I look at it and I'm going, it looks like Ursula to me. I just think the makeup was bad. Like, yeah, it looks like Ursula, but it doesn't look good. D is Ursula supposed to look good? For fuck's sake. supposed to look better <laughs> the, than it, that. It, it seems like we have more issues with that than Flounder and freaking Sebastian, who are completely destroyed in this movie. When you watch the commercials, you go, this is going to be horrible. Because they basically took the Lion King, the 
it, the the live version of the Lion King, and they've basically put that with actual people this time, and it looks horrible in my opinion. I'll, I mean, eh, I'm not a big fan of that live action like animals that they do. I'm not gonna lie though, the number of children that are so happy seeing it, I'm so excited for it. I think the biggest sin of the entire movie is Aquafina's very existence, but I mean. As a bad oh, thing or a good thing? As a bad thing. It's a sin that she's there. Oh, Why? She's, oh, it just, I've heard clips of the rapping that she's doing. It's just not good. Ooh. Okay. I'm just not a fan. I'm not, like, I'm excited to see the movie. I really, really, really want to see it. And I think that Halle Bailey is absolutely the best choice. And a lot of people are trying to say, like, well, they only picked her because of the fact that she's black and blah, blah, blah. And she's not a good choice. No, no, no. She's fucking incredible. I've seen her perform live. She is so insanely good. Like, and she's she's doing a big push this year. Like 2023 is shaping up to be the year of Halle Bailey, Bailey right now. Yep, which is, which is good. I mean, and that happens. You get one really big movie. A good example of this is Rachel Zegler. She got in West Side Story as Maria, and now she's friggin' everywhere. She's Snow White. She I just watched the, the Shazam 2, and she was in that. Like, She's getting cast in everything because she's become like the it girl, sort of like when Timothy Chalamet got first put in a movie and then was everywhere. And Adam Driver. Also Basically. him, Zendaya. It's it's just her time. And I'm, I'm excited because I love her. Speaking of other people who are having their moment in the sun right now, we're heading to Barbie world because Ryan Gosling is telling off Barbie critics who claim he is too old to play Ken. As he is he quoted as he is quoted to say, you never cared about Ken before this. Um, okay, I'll be honest. I'm not going to see this movie. I'm probably going to see this movie when it comes out on streaming. And think it's nominated. You think it's going to be nominated for something? A hundred percent. It's going to get nominated for a lot of things. I hope it doesn't. But anyway. I hope it does. I'm so excited. Um. Do you, do you think uh, Ryan has a leg to stand on here? Do you think people are just upset? Because there are other versions of Ken in this movie, which we see, and there's other versions of Barbie in this movie. I didn't see an issue with this casting because isn't Ken like 90 years old? Didn't he come out like in the 1920s or the 1940s? And like in 2023, he kind of looks good for a 90 year old man, doesn't he? It's fucking hot. Are we trying to say Ryan Gosling's not hot? I feel like that's what people are trying to say. I am. I, I who like who cares about Ken though? He's so hot. In well, this movie. I th I think they're making him out to be like the the character mm -hmm. everyone can relate to, and the Barbie is the character going down the rabbit hole, right? The uh, Alice in Wonderland. I think uh, Ken is or to. Barbie is the Dorothy of this story, and Ken is the three sidekicks who everyone loves, everyone knows about, but don't really have much to say about. So I think they're just upset that it's not Timothy Chalamet or and Sean it Mendes. Not be. I I agree, but I think that's... Ryan Gosling's going to do a fantastic job. I think people just want to bitch, and it's a lot of like young young folks that are bitching the most about him, and it's like. Everybody needs to sit down and just enjoy this movie, and it's going to be incredible. And I will die on that hill. I will die on that hill. Okay, you 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 I, die on that hill. I will die on that hill. I'm. We are literally. It comes out the weekend we go to Cape Cod, and my friend Katie and I are already do, like planning on dragging our significant others to see the Barbie movie against their will, and I may have to see it three <laughs> or four times. I need it to so, be bigger than Oppenheimer. So what's the over under that Aqua's Barbie girl gets played in the movie? Oh, it's already been, it's already on oh, the list. They already oh, released is? the track list. Oh, okay. I hadn't seen that. So never mind that. I I guess that's an over that it's going to be on. The... <laughs> oh, oh, that was guaranteed. It's like a remixed cool new version. Too, well, I'm because saying. when the trailer came out, remember when the trailer came out, everyone was pissed off that they didn't use that song for the trailer because it would have been perfect but i i'm looking forward to it and i i'm so happy that you're willing to go see a movie with will ferrell three times 
I know I'm shocked too. I'm shocked beyond belief by this, but like the rest of the cast, just fire, just fire. It's just, I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> so excited. And I just um, can't hide it. So to go from a very happy story to a kind of a weird story here. Um, first off, I didn't know that there was a revival. I knew there was like a limited run revival of this, uh, the sex in the city show, which is called and just like that. But I didn't know that it was coming back for a second season. Now I know that for the revival, Kim Cattrall did say she was not coming back because I guess there was some on set conflict between her and Sarah Jessica Parker, but Hey, look at that. Kim Cattrall probably needs some money right now, so she's... Exactly! <laughs> the the bitch needs some coin. Give her some coin. So she is going to be back for the second season of And Just Like That. Uh, and she has filmed scenes uh, secretly re uh, revived. Yeah. Um, are you excited for this? Are, are you a sex, Were you a Sex in the City fan? No. So I tried to watch it during the pandemic. My husband's like, oh, you've never seen Sex in the City? We should watch it. It was all right. And we started watching it. We got halfway through the first season. And I'm like, there's nothing redeemable about any of these women. There's nothing redeemable about this show. It's very dated. It's very problematic. Well, uh, everything in the 90s is dated and problematic, girl. Like, Not the Golden Girls. I said the 80s, the 90s and 2000s. I didn't say the 80s because we all remember the Golden Girls were old and they were in the 80s. Um, and, and, and there's a lot of stuff from the 80s and 90s that and early 2000s that does hold up. It's just this did not. Well, Friends doesn't either. The Office no. doesn't. The Office, like all these shows that people like don't hold up. But I like The Office just isn't funny. Ah, I find it funny. I don't like that cringe humor, though. And I think that's why I couldn't do that or Parks and Rec. I love Parks and Rec, but I think I just like politics so much that I think it's hilarious. And I w It was literally on while I was working in municipal governments. But getting back to Sex in the City, um, this isn't going to last forever, is it? Like this, this is going to be like a three season revival, just like the Will and Grace revival where they last it for two seasons too long extra. I don't know. I feel like people were really excited about it and then they watched it and then they were like, ooh, I hate everything. Like all I, saw, all I kept seeing were people hate watching it and like hating on it. And I'm like, yes, because these women were never likable. You all just deluded yourselves into thinking because it was the 90s. I agree. And none of them can act. Well, Cynthia Nixon can act and that's about it. Kim Cattrall could act. She wasn't in it the first season. I know, but going back to Sex and the City, she can act. I didn't see any acting in season one. Wow. I, listen, I called it like I the know, season. I know it's Pride Month, but you can just like calm your horses about your bitchiness and your fucking cattiness. No. Like, <laughs> you do what you want, don't you? I, yes, I do. Um, so I don't know what's wrong with me today. Speaking of, yeah, I'm the guy who's popped up on pain medication right now, and you're the one who's going more crazy than I am. You're feeding off my energy. You're feeding off my energy. It's um, the allergy pill I'm on. Woo! <laughs> woo! Uh, literally bad segue there. Um, I want to talk about Danny Matherson for a second. Um, that 70s show actor found guilty of rape. Um, not shocked here. This no. is, and I think that this is the tipping point that we're going to start seeing a lot more people held to account. That's what I say now, but then we see other people just walk away freely. So, um, what do you have any take on this? Uh, this story that kind of came out relatively in the last few days compared to when we were supposed to record. I mean, bye, bitch. Like, enjoy jail. Hope you don't get beat up. Like. I it's just not okay. And like, I'm glad he's being held accountable because there's so many that are not and have not been held accountable for doing shit like this. And I would like to say that it's a turning point, but I also am fully cognizant that he hasn't had much of a career in a minute and it's easy to put him away for it um, versus someone else who's a bigger name, like mm, Kevin Spacey. But like, it's just... 
So he can face up to 30 years in prison, uh, depending on the uh, verdict, which we have not found out what the uh, results. So he has been found guilty. We just have to wait for the trial and the sentencing. Um, He was taken into custody on Wednesday following the verdict and the trial started in April. So it was relatively quick. I didn't hear much about it over the last month um, or month and a half. I'm not sure if you had, but it wasn't a story like the Johnny Depp story or even the Gwyneth Peltro story. Are these type of stories not the sensationalized stories that we like to see in the media when it comes to TMZ uh, talking about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard or TMZ talking about Gwyneth Peltro skiing into somebody? I think with, with Gwyneth Peltro, it was so unknown. I think she had a really good PR team that buried it as deep as they could. Um, with this, I think everyone was like, there was so much evidence that people were like, yep, like point blank period. Yep. Whereas with Johnny Depp, people were rooting for him to beat this and like, were so actively a part of it that Johnny Depp's team, I think fed into the media craze a little bit to propel it bigger than it was. Okay. And, and bigger than it should have been. I don't think that we should be giving so much like limelight to these circuses, but eh, what do I know? I'm not a lawyer or a publicist. So if you've watched the show before, you know, I love not talking about our next story. I love it so much that I despise them with a passion. I don't think they're good musicians. I don't think they're good artists, but I want to talk about it because I love when people come to my side and realize how bad they are. Um, So, Earlier this month, Tina Turner unfortunately passed away and uh, Beyonce and Jay-Z are making headlines for the mockery of the late singer's abuse. Now, I never want to joke about abuse. I think it's not something we should. I think rape is off the table as well. But I would assume that people like Jay-Z and Beyonce um, would understand that as well, particularly in such a short period of time after the passing of Tina Turner. Um, we we often remember the negative things after people die, uh, but we never remember the good things. And Tina Turner was an amazing singer and songwriter, and I think she is probably up there with some of the greats in this country, in this world. But to pigeonholed her to just a, a the abuse of history that she had gone through is kind of wrong and for people like Beyonce and to Jay-Z to make fun of this stuff and sort of joke over this it it's sad in my opinion and this is why I don't like our entertainment industry how we uh pedestal so many people like Beyonce and Jay-Z, but that's just me. I know I'm going to get angry females, uh, angry emails about uh, the beehive saying I, I shouldn't be talking about this, but that's just me. Michael, what's your thoughts on this? This kind of low story that no one really talked about, but it's still making the waves in my opinion. I didn't know that it existed until you oh. just said it. I just had to literally look up that. Because in our initial thing, you said Tina Turner's death. And I'm like, I have so many opinions. I am so devastated. And then I just had to quickly like page six it to find out what it was. So I was like, I don't know what this is. I've not seen this. I think that it's because it's lyrics from Drunken Love, uh, which is one of her songs from like 2014, 2013. Not one of her boppers. Uh, No, it was pushed as a as a single it was it's one of her big hits actually <laughs> it, it's just a lyric in that that i don't think people realize was a reference to tina turner i'm gonna be real i didn't pick up on it immediately i don't know if i don't know if to be problematic i'm sorry i don't know if she remember you, this, you have a whole know. month you have a whole month to be problematic because it can't come for you until july 1st i don't know if she fully realizes because i feel like i've heard the le- or the line eat the cake anime from a lot of different folks and so like i don't think everybody realizes what that is i fully can admit that i did not until pretty recently and then i haven't listened to beyonce in a good minute so i wouldn't think of it off that song until i just looked at the lyrics i'm like oh yeah she does say that in it 
I thought um, this was like a Neil Patrick Harris, David Burke, Amy Whitehouse cake situation. I was about to go full fucking crazy. What happened there? After her death, they had an a Amy Winehouse corpse cake for Halloween. Oh yeah, it was not. A cute what is look. what is with what? celebrities and oh, anyway, anyway. Sorry, uh, but but I want to talk about Tina Turner because that is the big story of the that month, and I kind of I think it is kind of the big story of this month in in general. Um, to quote her, she was simply the best, right? So. Uh, what were your initial thoughts when you heard this come across the CNN wire or wherever you got the news via Twitter, social media, or your husband saying it in passing? Oh, I said it first. I told him and he and I were both devastated. I literally was like, I need to throw up. This is not okay. It was heartbreak. I love her. I, I don't get like emotional, emotional over celebrities, but like, I was so sad that she passed. I love her music and I I think she's just such a powerful artist and she's one of the few artists that I really would pay any kind of money to see live. And I'm never going to get the chance now. Um, She's just, she was just such a powerful, powerful musician. And like her music is going to stand up to the test of time because of how friggin' good it is. So I have a very weird question and I had to make sure I, 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 I uh, Googled this before I actually asked you. Um, the Tonys are coming up. Yes. Will Angela Bassett do a thing at the Tonys to commemorate Tina Turner at the Tonys? Because she did play Tina Turner in What's Love Got to Do With It in 1993, uh, based on the singer-songwriter's life. Uh, Do you think it's just going to be a a passing thing, or do you think... Angela Bassett's going to actually say something because I don't think Tina was ever on Broadway, was she? She has a whole musical. Okay, so do you think um, she she would do you think they would potentially do something or because of the writer strike it's going to screw it up? I don't know if it's going to screw it up. Um I don't know if they're planning on anything. I, I mean, they have to fill time and they may do one of Tina Turner's songs as the in memoriam. Uh, and what they should do is get Adrian Warren, who won the Tony Award for playing Tina Turner on Broadway. And I think she won the Olivier on the West End for doing it as well. Um, okay, which... but but they should they do something? Should they? Yeah, I mean, because the Grammys sh- will have something. I guarantee it. Next year they will have something, or unless it's it has passed so far, because the Grammys happen when. Uh, uh, January, February. So the Grammys will still probably do something big for her. Um, she's a huge name that you would not leave out. Um, yeah. I, th- the Tonys might. She wasn't like because she just had the one musical oh, okay. about her life. So they may not do a big thing for her. She'll definitely be not mentioned. I, I think she might be mentioned. Um, in the in memoriam, but they may not do much. Just because she's, it depends on how much time they need to fill since it's unscripted. Stretch it out. <laughs> Stretch it out. Well, they have a three hour window. I mean, who knows? It's going to be an interesting June 11th. Um, I want to talk about our last story before we turn to uh, sort of what's upcoming because we're at the half hour mark and we want to make sure we get through this. Um, but TV is losing some of its big names right now. We have seen the ending of Succession, and we are seeing. We just saw the end of Ted Lasso, HBO, and uh, uh, Apple TV. These have been big TV shows at the Golden Globes, at the Emmys. They've been picking up a lot of the best drama, best comedy, and usually during the during the times uh, we see a big turnover after five six years. Um, is this going to shake up potential the next year's Emmy race or Emmy races for comedy? Because I know this is the last year, so they're going to be nominated. They're going to win. But do you think? Not necessarily. Gonna... Oh, really? Okay. Now, oh, yeah. A lot of times you win your first season or two, and then you don't really win after that. Well, um, Succession's been really. Succession's the big one. But, yeah. I mean, Mrs. Maisel also ended. I think you might see a couple of, you might get. You might see a win or two from that. I don't know. I mean, the season was kind of a little whack, but. Did it end? Yeah. Yeah, officially. Good. Good. Didn't Miss Maisel get it? Like, I just, was there a story that I, is this fake or was this part of the show 
Miss Maisel got a star on the Walk of Fame. That was not in the show, so maybe that got a maybe that was real. Yeah, because I was like, "What the heck is this?" Uh, Hold and... on, I'm so confused. Uh, oh, she had an honorary star on behalf of the artist. But still, I don't know what that means. <laughs> that means absolutely nothing. <laughs> but oh, she got a star that says Midge Maisel on it as an honorary moment. I, I don't know what that means or how it goes or what, but hey, but we do our thing. Are we seeing the transformation of TV, do you think? Are we going to see a new crop of TV shows come up here? Or are there TV shows that are going to take these places? Because Succession, Ted Lasso have become sort of ingrained in the pop culture of our society, right? While you might not watch Ted Lasso, you probably know of Ted Lasso and the positivity that it ensues. I've never seen an episode of Succession, but I can tell you, I have people around me who talk about the Kieran Culkins, the Brian Coxes, the Brian McFaddens, and I'm going, I don't know who these people are, so I I, I have no emotional connection to them. Do you think there's going to be, a, there probably will, but what are the shows that you're looking at to see as the next sort of pop culture ingrained in society talks? Nothing, because we have a writer strike going on, so no new work is getting produced currently at this time. That's really, I'm surprised they haven't fixed that. I'm surprised they have not come to an agreement yet. This is a good time to do it. To wow. not come to agreement for a very long time because all these shows are being canceled. And like, it's kind of at the point where they could take a little bit of a break and they can do a lot of duds. And I mean, it, it's, they're going to bring scabs in and they're going to write terrible shows. I mean, it, a lot of things are being canceled this year. A lot of things are ending this year. So like well, it comes I down just, to it. Oops, sorry. No, go ahead. Continue. I was going to interject, but because I'm just looking for that list that I sent you a few weeks ago about what's being canceled, because I think there is a lot of shows being canceled. Yeah. A lot of shows are being canceled or are being just, are just not surviving or are just ending how they want to end. And I think that it's just until we see what's coming up, which we don't know because of the writer's strike, we're probably not going to see much. We're not going to be able to know what's going to probably be successful. I'm curious to see if we get a um, second season of Wheel of Time soon or the Lord of the Rings TV show, which I really liked. But I well, don't because know. would would that be under WGA or would that be someone else? Because they're mostly done in WGA. Britain. Would they be WGA even if they're not based in America? If it's for an American television program, but they're or both a Amazon. television network. If it's for an American television network, it's done there. Okay, so I want to just go through this quickly because um, Abbott Elementary, which I know you like, renewed. Uh, the Connors renewed. Goldberg's canceled. The Good Doctor, which I've recently got into, and I'm surprised it's being renewed so many times. Um, the it's rookie, not good. the Wonder Years is back. Yeah, really. Okay. The one I want to talk about though is CW because CW basically took a freaking battering ram to their lineup, and um, so I'll be right back after a quick little break because I want to make sure I get this right here. So just tune in, guys. Two seconds. Uh, welcome back. Sorry about that. I just had to make sure that I got the right uh, information here. And I want to talk about CW because they have been going through this weird transitional period since they've sold to another company. And we are no longer seeing the uh, DC television shows because they're all coming to an end or have come to an end. The Flash, Green Arrow, Supergirl, Stargirl, Superman and Lois might be canceled. We've seen Walker Independence uh, officially cancer, canceled. The spinoff to Supernatural or the prequel to Supernatural, the Winchesters be canceled. Nancy Drew, the series finale. Riverdale, the series finale. Gotham Knights might be canceled here. Um, the only thing that kind of seems to be renewed is 
All American, which is about uh, football, and Walker, which is based on the Chuck Norris Walker Texas Ranger, with which has uh, Jarrett Paladinka, but Correct. Dinka. yeah. Um, so, what do you make of this CW transition that they're doing? Do you think they just don't want to pay the royalties for all these shows anymore? Correct. They don't. <laughs> They don't make money. Thank you for coming to our TED Talk. Correct. (laughs) (laughs) The CW doesn't make money and hasn't been making money in a long time. The best thing they had, or not the best thing, the thing people watched that they had was Supernatural and Riverdale. Yeah. And that's still all people want to watch is Supernatural and Riverdale, which is why they tried to do the spinoff for Supernatural and it did not work. Just like they tried to do a Riverdale spinoff and it didn't work because people like those shows. But the actors on Riverdale do not want to do that show anymore because they know that it is bad. Oh, is that really right? What's happening? Oh, it's. uh, I I don't know if you have seen. I know you haven't. I I, I do not. I literally, I I literally watched the first like five episodes and I was like, I'm done with this show. The first season was good. The second season was when it just was like, oh, what if we just leaned into the camp? And it's like, okay. And then every season, it's like, well, what if we just go a little farther? And it's like, okay, this is too much, too much, too much. No, no, too, stop. And like every, and now there's like magic and like blood sacrifices and like they just fully just like jumped the shark and then said, what if we jumped it backwards? What if we jumped it on the side? What if we just went like this a couple of times over the shark? Like, what? And I had to stop watching it because it got too much. I really like Nancy Drew. I think it was a great show there. I think I've not seen this recent season. I just... I haven't had time. She's busy. She's booked and blessed. And so the CW has just not been profitable. And like the superhero, the DC stuff was very well received, well liked. The issue became you had to watch 20 television programs to understand the crossover that happened once a year. And it just wasn't as big of a payoff as people were hoping. Like the first few times it was great, but then it was just like, Again, too much. Stop putting more in my face. Like, I'm busy. I can't watch 20 shows to understand one episode. That's true. Well, you could do it during the COVID-19 pandemic when there was literally nothing else to do. But overall, now it's like, yeah, I can't do that. I when I was who... unemployed, that was what I did. I watched all the DC shows, got fully caught up, and then was able to so- sit and focus because I had just moved to LA and I didn't know anybody. The minute I started making friends and had literally ev- other things to do was I'd sit in my house and watch the flash and the arrow and the Supergirl and the this and the league of that. And the, 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 the. it's like, I, I don't have time and it's not capture and it's not good enough television to capture my attention. I would agree wholeheartedly on that. Um, before we turn to sort of what we're going to be doing in the future and what we're looking forward to over the next month, I want to talk about some of the movies that are coming out this month, because it seems like we're about to enter the blockbuster phases of the summer, because this is usually when they start dropping all the movies that people just want to go see. Um, one of them. So I'm going to just list off the ones that I saw in the list. And I know I sent you this. I'm not sure if you went through your list, but we have Indiana Jones and the dial of destiny coming out uh harrison ford is back as indiana jones wes anderson's asteroid city which i'm really actually looking forward to it looks amazing and i'm not a wes anderson fan so i'm looking forward to this one uh the flash so we will see if if they uh ezra miller is going to do well um the pr seems to be not about ezra miller but it seems to be about everyone else who is in the movie of course you don't (laughs) want to promote them they're problematic um transformers rise of the beast is coming out uh disney's new uh pixar movie is coming out elemental and one that i saw that i did not realize was even a thing and i'm shocked that she's even doing it but jennifer lawrence has a new movie and it's a comedy no hard feelings um are we are we entering the blockbuster phase here the blockbuster phase of the year michael I mean, maybe. Uh, I well, yeah. I mean, Barbie's coming out, and that's going to be the biggest blockbuster of all time. Um, <laughs> I'm going to keep talking about Barbie. I'm sorry. Um, I think Je- uh, that Jennifer Lawrence movie. We've had the trailer for it for like months now. 
have I literally did not know about it until I read the list on Wikipedia and I was like, what's going on here? Why is Jennifer Lawrence in a movie that does not star uh, is 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 not being directed by Dylan uh, Avernowski or whatever his name is, Darren Avernowski. Um, I really like that we have the new Spider Man coming out, Spider Verse. That's in July, right? June. Oh, that's June first. Tomorrow. No, that's today tomorrow. Oh, okay. June second. Mm-hmm. Well, technically today we do the midnight thing. Um, Transformers. Do we need another Transformers movie? No. I would disagree with that, but. Ew! I grew, Ew! I, I grew up on Beast Wars as a kid, so I'm looking forward to it. So same, but like, ew, those movies aren't good. I'm coming violent okay. today. I'm choosing okay. violence. Okay. So for those who remember, uh, I I made a harmless joke about the Scream franchise and how it's basically jumped the shark and it is basically going to be Scream in space here soon. And Michael said he's going to come for me. And then I say I like Beast Wars and now that's problematic too. So Michael, tell me what I should like, okay? I know, I know it's your month. I know it's your holy month. What whoa, whoa, should whoa. I like? It's- our month. Oh, girl! The only thing that's our about that is the R in the alphabet soup. No, our O U R. I was making. Oh my God, you are. <laughs> She's real pretty. <laughs> this is this is just an unhinged podcast. For all of you <laughs> listening, I'm very sorry. I'm naturally not sorry. I'm just unhinged today and. That's just the journey that we're on. Oh, you forgot to mention theater camp. I'm like looking down the list coming out July 14th. It does have my enemy, my arch enemy, Ben Platt in it. Hey, speaking of Ben Platt, they got engaged again. Him and Noah Galvin. I thought, oh yeah, they did. They (laughs) re-engaged their engagement. I don't know. Whatever. I'm excited for theater camp. Static. Why? Isn't it camp? It's basically the new version of camp, but like, a little more artsy and a little less funny. I wonder how many times uh, Noah Galvin is going to be in every single thing that Ben Platt is in. Everything now. Why would you not ride those coattails? Um, oh, did you mention the Mission Impossible that's coming out? Uh, I think that comes out in July, does it not? July. Yeah, so I'm just I'm like I'm, into the I'm future. Just... I'm just talking about movies. That's July's episode. That's that's. Oh, I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. I'm super excited about movies. I'm just going ahead. I'm just doing the summer. That's I, that's I, what I, I can tell. We can't. <laughs> I cannot help myself today. I'm so sorry. I blame my. I blame Allegra. Okay. <laughs> Yet again, I go through radiation treatment on a daily basis, and I thought I was going to be the problematic one in this episode. <laughs> no. 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 You are one to quote Ursula, poor unfortunate soul, Missy. I'm just struggling. <laughs> do you want it? Do you want some legs? I'll sing you a song and we'll take your legs away or give you legs so you can go up and be with your man on the sea. Ew, no, if I'm a mermaid, I'm staying a mermaid. They don't have to work, they don't have to do nothing but lounge around and like be well, pretty in the wall. See, see, and Ursula was pretty. In that picture, mm, Melissa McCarthy. No, she sure was not. Why can't we all just get along? Why no, can't we? <laughs> that ship has sailed. We've never uh, all gotten along. Especially you and I. I we, don't no, think we, get, we like we like to argue. We like to bicker. <laughs> we get along very well, but we both like a good argument. And sometimes I feel like we'll both pick a side and like stick in deep just for the joy of the argument. Oh, sometimes I don't even know what I'm arguing with you. I know. I say, I, like, I just like to see what you, how angry you get at me, and then I get not email. angry. <laughs> and then you get an email that you're bullying me. Yeah, love it. I haven't got one of those in a while. Maybe, hey, if you if you think we're bullying, send us an email or two. Everyone, I think because at this point we've like very established that you and I are just aggressive to each other because we think it's funny. <laughs> I think that everyone now knows like they're not bullying each other. They're both just assholes. <laughs> But they're funny. I've never felt so complimented in my life. Right? <laughs> um, but we are about the 45 minute mark, and I want to ask this big question to you. What's on the docket for June for Michael besides celebrating Pride? 
Um, I have any, any new books that you're getting into TV shows that you're excited to be sort of seeing catching up on, because I know you're kind of in this transitional period before you start traveling again and not doing many shows. So what's going on? Well, I'm trying to get to New York on June 25th because the, there's a current revi- not a revival. It's like a encores. It's a group they do. Uh, where shows that haven't been revived in a while, they do like a week of it and it's like a concert version. They're doing Light in the Piazza, which is one of my favorite musicals. Trying to go to the city to see that and then catch something in the evening. I don't know if it's going to swing. Um, if it's going to happen that time, I'm just going to try my hardest. Um, so that's something for June I'm looking forward to if I can make it happen. I also am in that uh, cultural festival doing the staged reading of a Shina Maidel. Um, which I'm really excited for. Uh, I don't know if I don't I don't I don't even have rehearsal until Saturday, so I can't even tell you much about it until then. I've read the script. I'm in three scenes. It's perfect. It's a princess track. We love a princess track because it's you get very little stage time, but you get the best scenes in the show. It's true. It's who doesn't? Or you get like the best song in the show, and you sing one song, and then you disappear. Great, we love it. Um, that's really it. June is like a fairly quiet month before July and August swing around. How about you? Anything thrilling? Uh, For June? No. Next two weeks, I'm kind of busy doing treatment still. So I'm still kind of in lockdown and under lock and key in the house. So I haven't really been doing much over the last five weeks. Uh, but GameCon in Calgary is going to be coming up. So I'm going to be going to cover that later on in June. So that's where they get all the board games. And anyone who knows me, I'm a big board game fan. So I'm looking forward to going to GameCon and uh, probably bringing back some stories to tell in our next episode at the end of June, uh, which will not be coming out on July 1st, just for everyone uh, who's be for anyone uh, paying attention right now, because that is Canada Day. So we're going to try and record a little bit earlier in June. And that will be our last episode of the summer. I'm kind of springing this on Michael because August, uh, I'm hope at the end of July and beginning of August, I'm taking about a four week uh, uh, sabbatical and doing a bit of touring. And we're got an RV and we're going to be going across Canada and visiting some of these amazing places that I've been talking about on the my other show, the Cross Border Interviews. So. Um, there's that. And then in July, I'm looking forward to Calgary Stampede. So I'm gearing up and saying my yeehaws and the yahoos and the wee was and the uh, baboos. And I don't know what other things cowboys say and ride them cowboys. I don't think they say 90% of that. <laughs> Challenge accepted. I will I'm find screaming. a cowboy. <laughs> I will I'm find hollering. A um, so I'm looking forward to that. So we're going to be there. And then I have friends coming at the end of uh, June for a visit for a few days. They're coming out from Nova Scotia. So my husband and I have been frantically running around trying to clean the house before they get here. But the big thing I should have said, and I, I've been saying this on the other show as well, on June 10th, uh, the Brain Tumor Foundation of Canada is holding their annual walk, their 29th annual walk in Calgary. I will be there. My husband is going to be emceeing. Uh, we walk for uh, people who uh, are diagnosed, diagnosed with tumors. 27 uh, Canadians are diagnosed with a tumor, a brain tumor every single day in Canada. I am one of those unlucky souls. Uh, I have had the best medical system in this world helping me out, not costing me a thing. And I appreciate it every single day. So if you can, a link will be in the show notes. If you can donate uh, for those in Canada who can donate, please consider making a small donation because it does help families like mine go a long way in battling a uh, brain tumor. And it's the worst news someone can get when they first start off that, um, Tumors are not fun. And the ramifications that I've been going through over the last four years dealing with one, three years, I should say, dealing with one has not been fun. So any way that I can help make uh, the next family who's going through through the same thing that I'm going through, happy to do it. Um, So that's what I'm going to be doing over the next month. Uh, that, That really got serious there here for a second. Look at that. So, oh, uh, but if you're in Calgary, June 10th, uh, Edworthy Park in the south uh, east, southwest, southeast, southwest, Edworthy Park, if you know 
Yeah, Michael, why do you not know this? Like, how do you not know I, this? I don't know directions. You started saying southeast, southwest, and I'm like, I don't know these things. Um, so come out to the Calgary uh, Edward Thee Park. Eight o'clock. We have some great bands. We have uh, the Brother Bicker. We have Megan Page. We're going to be doing some live auctions. So please come out and support the great cause. Uh, so that's what that's like. I kind of got a busy month this month. It's unfortunate, but I love it because, oh, and we're back to recording some new shows. So that's really what I've been, I will be doing all the while trying not to die from a brain tumor. Oh my, what a wild journey we all just got to go on with you. You're welcome, man. I, 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 I share my love and I share my excitement with everyone. I'm hollering. I'm deceased. I can't. Well, I sh I could be deceased soon. So. Oh my God! You can't <laughs> say things like that, Christopher. Morbid. One in twenty-seven people. So go donate. If you can't, if you can't make fun, then what can you do? Um, but. It's going to be fun. Uh, any books you've been reading? Because I just read a great book. I actually put, put it off to the side so that way I could talk about it. Um, I just read a book last night and I had to- How's your book club free. going? You you know how my book club is going. <laughs> you know exactly how my book club is going. We haven't that talked about that. That is an active assault. That is an <laughs> active aggression. That, my book club fell apart because getting people together to read books is apparently difficult. Did and you say you were going to go meet with excited, like fifty year old girl women and go do a book club with them? I'm looking into. There's one that goes on, but it's like a 45 minute drive, and it's like not with alcohol. And like, ugh, I want to, I want to drink and talk books, and like, they're reading like books that are like not my jam in any so, way. So here's what we'll do: when we come back after the summer in September, we'll start the unofficial No Not Them book club. <laughs> Price like Oprah Winfrey's book club. We we will drink on the show. Well, you will drink. I will watch. <laughs> um, I just read if he had been with me, and I'm real mad at it. So it's currently sleeping in my freezer. Um, seriously? Yes, it's on punishment. I don't like how it ended. Did <laughs> you send me a photo of that? N maybe because I want to use that as the cover art. I'm screaming. I'm real mad at Laura Nowlin. She's on punishment. Um, uh, uh you can't you can't write a book like that. It's no, what, absolutely what's, not. What's it about? This it's a these like star-crossed lover romance that ends really tragically. You're all about the star-crossed lovers, aren't you? No, I'm all about the gay politicians' children or the children of politicians that are gay fucking at Wimbledon. With red, white, and royal blue, but like, which that movie is coming out this year? Yes, later on, like late this year, fall. If I'm, uh, I'm so ready, and they can't been... wait to stream that on X two <laughs> or Pornhub. Which one is it? It's one of those porn websites. <laughs> sure, you don't know what those websites are. No, I know what those websites are. <laughs> I just think I dated myself by saying two websites that don't exist anymore. <laughs> I was gonna say, isn't that Twitter? Isn't that where all the, the homosexuals are going? Amen to that. Um, so with that, uh Michael, it's always been a, it's always a pleasure to sit down with you. Oh, I should say my book. Um, Tom Clancy's new book. Well, not Tom Clancy's he's he, he's deceased, <laughs> but uh Don right. Bentley wrote uh the next uh, Jack Ryan Jr. novel, Flashpoint. I enjoyed it immensely. I've been going down this uh Jack Ryan uh kick recently and I'm looking forward to their next one. But I, I'm not a big fan of the Jack Ryan Jr. stories because it seems so ooh. But the original Jack Ryan is where I'm going. So the next uh, Jack Ryan novel is going to be coming out this month. So I'm looking forward to that, too. So that's what I've been reading. And as if anyone can hear, because I'm not sure if it ever gets picked up. But that's my dogs fighting right now because they probably got a bone or got a ball or something. So, oh, so I'm glad that no one can hear that. Nah, I never hear it. Oh, ah, even better. Even better. Um, but always a pleasure to sit down and chat with you. It's a good time. Isn't it? Isn't it always? It always is, though I'm a little unhinged. 
this this episode is the unhinged episode. Viewer discretion. It's Happy about- Pride. <laughs> um, Happy so Pride. With- I'm deranged. So with that, he has been Michael Nichols, not the entertainment, uh, the theater director, EGOT winner. Uh, I have not been the Chris Brown R&B singer. He, he has been Michael Nichols. I have been Chris Brown. This has been no not them till next time i this is a i really suck this is these. why <laughs> this, i keep this, it keep it this is i hate these exits because i always have it in my head how i'm gonna say it and then when i start talking you look at me like you're gonna fuck this up <laughs> i do not fuck. look at you like that i just am like watching along like yeah we're vibing <laughs> and then it just goes off the rails and i'm like still in a vibe it's like mickey's runaway railway right here but anyway, he has been Mike Nichols. I have been Chris Brown. We have been Mike. Oh, my God. We have been. Oh, my God. Until next it's time, infectious. this is me. This is me. No, not that. No, not, no, not that. <laughs> Seven months doing this. Six months doing the show. We I still don't know the fucking name of it. <laughs> Happy Pride, everyone. Until next time. That there. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.